What if I told you that Netflix, Spotify and Amazon, the companies everyone points to as microservices success stories, actually started with the exact opposite architecture? And most importantly, what if choosing monolith first is exactly what made them successful? If you are building a SaaS product right now and feeling pressured to go microservices from day one, this video might just save you months of development time and potentially your entire startup. Hello everyone, I'm Swarnendu and today we are going to be deep diving into one of the biggest misconceptions in modern software architecture. We are going to explore why the most successful SaaS companies in the world choose monolith first, when you should make the same choice and most importantly when you shouldn't. If you are new to this channel, I would request that you subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon. I share deep dives like this on SaaS, AI and product strategy every week. We also send a lot of free giveaways like ebooks, templates and worksheets to our subscribers regularly. Let's start with some facts that might surprise you. Netflix didn't start as a microservices powerhouse streaming billions of hours of content. They started as a DVD by mail service with a monolith architecture. Spotify began as a simple music streaming app with everything bundled together. Amazon, they started as an online bookstore with a single unified code base. And here what is fascinating, these companies didn't accidentally stumble into monoliths and then fix their mistake by moving to microservices. They strategically chose Monolith because at their stage, it was the smartest architectural decision they could make. Think about what these companies needed in the early days. Speed. Netflix needed to prove that people would actually order DVDs online. Spotify needed to show that streaming music could work reliably. Amazon needed to demonstrate that e-commerce was viable. None of them needed to handle millions of concurrent users on day one. What they needed was to iterate fast, validate their business model and get to market quickly. A monolithic architecture gave them exactly that. When your entire code base is in one place, you can deploy changes in minutes, not hours. You can debug issues without hunting across multiple services. You can onboard new developers in days not weeks. You can focus on limited resources on building features, not infrastructure. Let me walk you through Netflix's actual evolution. In their DVD days, they had a monolithic Java application handling everything. User accounts, inventory management, shipping logistics and their early recommendation engine. This monolith served them incredibly well for years. It allowed them to rapidly experiment with features like their queue system and early recommendation algorithms. But here is the key. They only started breaking into microservices when they had specific, measurable problems that a monolith couldn't solve. When Netflix moved into streaming, they faced challenges their monolith wasn't designed for. Challenges like massive scaling requirements, millions of concurrent streams, Global distribution, different content libraries per region, device diversity, smart TVs, phones, tablets, game consoles, resilience needs, a single failure couldn't take down the entire system. Only then did microservices make sense. They didn't adopt microservices because it was trendy, they adopted it because their business required it. Spotify's journey is even more instructive. They started with a monolithic C++ application focused on one thing, playing music reliably. Their early team could iterate incredibly fast because they were not managing dozens of services. But as they grew, they faced unique challenges. Challenges like social features that needed different scaling patterns than music streaming. Analytics that required heavy data processing, payment systems with different security and compliance requirements, mobile apps that needed optimized APIs. 
Each of these became a microservice, but only when the business case was crystal clear. Here is what I have learned from starting these companies and working with dozens of startups. Monoliths are your best friend when you are validating product market fit. If you are not sure people want what you are building, speed of iteration beats architectural purity every time. Second, your team is small. If you have fewer than 10 developers, the overhead of managing multiple services will slow you down more than help you. Third, your problem is straightforward. If you are building a CRM, a simple e-commerce site or a content management system, a well-designed monolith will serve you for years. Fourth, you need to be profitable quickly. Microservices require significant infrastructure investment. If you need to bootstrap to profitability, keep it simple. But here is the secret sauce these companies have used. They didn't just build any monolith. They built what is called a modular monolith. That means they organized their code into clear separate modules with well-defined interfaces. Authentication lived in one module, billing in another, core business logic in a third. They were deployable as one unit but architecturally they were separate. This approach gave them the best of the both worlds. The simplicity and speed of monolithic deployment and the ability to eventually extract services when needed and then have a clear separation of concern from day one. When Netflix eventually moved to microservices, they were not rewriting everything from scratch. They were extracting already well-defined modules. Now, there are times when you shouldn't start with a monolith. Like, number one, your team has deep distributed systems expertise. If you are ex-Google, ex-Netflix engineers who live and breathe microservices, the learning curve will not slow you down. Second, you are building something inherently distributed. If you are building a multi-tenant B2B platform from day one, certain architectural decisions make sense early. Third, you have strong investor backing and longer runway. If you can afford the extra complexity and development time and your market opportunity demands immediate scale. The genius of companies like Netflix, Spotify and Amazon wasn't just that they started with monoliths, it's how they managed the transition. They followed what Martin Fowler calls the strangler freak pattern. Instead of rewriting everything at once, they gradually extracted services that had clear business boundaries, were causing scaling bottlenecks, required different expertise or technology stacks, and had operational requirements. Authentication services were often first because they are self-contained. Payment systems came next because of compliance requirements. Analytics and reporting followed because of resource intensity. So what should you do? Here is my framework. First, start with a modular monolith if you are pre-product market fit. Your team is fewer than 15 to 20 people. You need to move first and iterate quickly. You are bootstrapping or having limited runway. And consider early microservices only if you have clear distinct business capabilities that will obviously scale differently. You are integrating heavily with third party services anyway. And you have team members with deep microservices experience. Remember, Netflix, Spotify, and Amazon became successful not despite their monolithic beginnings, but because of them. They chose the right architecture for their stage, then evolved when their needs changed. The question isn't whether microservices are better than monoliths, it's whether they are better for you, right now at your current stage. So do not let architectural trends dictate your product strategy. Let your product strategy dictate your architecture. If this resonated with you, I would love to hear about your own architectural decisions in the comments. Are you building a monolith or considering a microservices? What challenges are you facing? And if you are interested in more deep dives into SaaS architecture decisions, subscribe and hit that bell. I have got a whole series planned on topics like this when to extract your first microservice 
database strategies for growing SaaS companies and the hidden cost of distributed systems. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.